commercialization. Um, so what we're offering to, to folks is um, a, a complete package. And you know, our intention was to bring this to market. Um, so we did, did most of this stuff you know, with our intention to, to move forward. Um, we're offering an extensive IP portfolio, um, technical assistance, my team, and experience, uh, fully functional DCI compatible projector. So this isn't just a, uh, you know, a bread, a laboratory experiment, okay? This is designed, it looks like a projector, it acts like a projector, um, you know, uh, you, could, you could run this thing in your theater. <coughs> uh, uh, laser safe studies, I mentioned that we've, we've done our laser safety homework and we're ready to go, it's ready to go forward with commercialization. So that's not an impediment. Supply agreement. So again, laser supply is not an impediment. And uh, pre preliminary uh, product environmental analysis. So we've done uh, carbon footprint studies um, and, and studies to, to make sure that this thing doesn't, that, that this thing is green. Okay. And from the savings of uh, not replacing uh, lamps and the savings in electricity, um, the savings in service calls, all that stuff adds up to making this substantially a, a green technology. Do you expect that your licensees will complete the necessary DCI CGP testing or? Yeah, I'm sure. They, uh, yes, absolutely. And it should be very easy for them because they're going to use the same electronics that they used all along. It's just a different optical block. So everything that they've done really already applies. Right? And if you put it in a, a box that is similar to you know, what they're putting in today, um, it should be comparatively straightforward. So is, there, is there anything in your package that makes it not exportable outside the United States? No. I can go to Libya. I mean, these lasers aren't going to shoot down planes or anything. So, I mean, there's nothing here that has licensing restrictions. No, and actually, the uh, the government's easing up on uh, regulations for a lot of that stuff. But as long, especially as, if it's incorporated into the product, it's not an issue. But most of the lasers are going to be made in China anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, well, we have to have the of the FDA oh, in other countries to yeah. certify the safety. Right? Yeah. So we have to have the EU. Version. Right, right, but the, yeah, but having one or, uh, is is you know much. There's no nuclear enrichment mission aspect to this, right? Yeah, so. no, no, yeah. So it's your intention, and maybe it's both, to provide basically licensing for an entire <coughs> projector, or to utilize your technology for basically a replacement of the current light engine that they've developed. So you're offering either or. Well, the really it is the light engine that we're we're licensing. Okay, um, uh, the rest of the projector they're already making. So, you know, the electronics and all, mm -hmm. all the circuit board, it, it's all the stuff. And we have we have laser drivers stuff that's unique. Okay, um, so you take you take out the old uh, you know uh, big ballasts and and and, uh, and the electronics that supports the xenon lamp, and instead you use uh, codex. Uh, Technology for driving lasers and managing lasers and controlling all that stuff, color balance. Uh, uh, but the the rest of their stuff, the DLP engine portion is is just as is. So, um, but the optics block would be would be different. But it's just to make sure I understand your question that the, the technology that we're bringing to bear here is uh, not just changing the light source. That uh, we lose most of the advantages that we offer if you just take the xenon lamp out and find a couple of lasers into it. Uh, yeah. You know, I think we might have a bit of technology that could help that approach, but you, you essentially lose almost all the benefits that Barry described by designing the lasers in from scratch in the optical system as opposed to adding them out to the lasers. So, so we will license that. But we're encouraging them to take the, uh, folks to take the bigger step, which is to to uh, rethink this from the beginning, okay, and and uh, utilize what's appropriate for laser instead of utilizing what was originally designed for Zima. So you would give up the built-in 3D, you would give up the high contrast ratio, and potentially may not be able to solve spec. And, and you give up the co optics costs. Yeah, yeah. So you still have expensive so, optics, right? So, so you're basically talking about the Bellman of Ledger, which is referred to as a Series 3 projector. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not a, it's not a retrofit yeah. as we envision it to yeah. exist in the projector. There are other folks that are talking about retrofits. And retrofits are, you know, <coughs> I mean, we don't want to totally dismiss retrofits, but 
uh, but all you're doing there is you're adding expense because the labor is more expensive, and you're not taking any expense out. Well, you're so you're now you're now you're expense out. Yes. Yeah. So now it's just simply a, a, a trade-off of a higher initial cost offset by lower ongoing cost, which is not bad. But uh, in our case, we have we believe no uh, incremental cost plus the reduced operating cost plus 3D plus higher quality. So uh, we think that's a preferable approach then to just uh, replace the excess. And there's we can see why people might want to do that. There's cert there certainly <coughs> a market for some retrofits when, when a laser actually becomes available to, to do such a thing. Um, so you need the laser to be able to be speckle-free, commercialized, reliable, and at a certain price. And nobody knows what that's going to be. Okay. So, so you, it's tough to you know, it, it's tough to trade off vaporware against uh, you know against uh, real solid uh, available stuff, and and you know that's the issue with, with the re replacement marketplace. I understand that the that the DMD is a point nine eight is was specifically developed for your application. Yeah. So 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 the window on the package is. Typical window used. No, the, the, the window is different. Right. So, it, so it's a specific application. Yes. So but the rest of the chip is the same. Right. The, the rest of the chip is the same, yeah. but, it, but it's a different, it's a different production, it's a different, it's a different component. You're talking about the surface of the window on the chip? Is that what you're talking the, about? The glass. The glass. The glass on is the different. top of the chip. There's yeah. a packaging change. There's a packaging change. Just back on the lenses, you're talking about fixed lenses. Are the lenses are set for a particular format. Are we going back to the same concept of film, or are we so, looking at a less expensive lens? So it's really up to commercialization partners. The lenses are are simpler than digital conventional digital cinema lenses of today. You can design a zoom, or you can design a fixed. We opted from from my philosophy. We opted for fixed. Okay, and, and the, re the reason being is that uh, uh, I, I felt that that's the, the cheapest way to go, right? In general, uh, a fixed with, a, with an anamorph uh, attachment is probably cheaper than, than anything else. But um, ultimately, it's up to you guys to decide and tell folks what to design for, for your theaters. <laughs>